of that printer. So what they do, you do is, you really want to go to, you go, that's assuming that they even know that that exists. Some people just connect it to, to the back of the printer and send it up from the printer and forget about it. But if you don't know it, know it. Printers have consoles. So when they get into the console, you don't need to damage the printer. All you need to do is change the settings on the printer. Bring higher the, the temperature of the fuser or lower the temperature of the future. The fuser, uh, uh, change the colors, change the type of paper, change something on the printer so that the printer, every time, every time that it tries to print, it would do an error. It will send an error message. And then you're gonna tell me, yeah, buddy, oh, that's great, but the person is, is gonna call his IT guy, you know? They wanna get paid. It's true. The IT guy is gonna go to the printer and he's going to probably fix it, you know, and pretty fast, maybe, because he's not going to be dumb. He's going to go to the printer. Oh, let me see what message is given. Oh, it says the size of the paper is wrong. So he's going to go and fix it. Then you're going to go and damage it again. Hmm? I just fix that. He's going to go and fix it again. Then you're going to go and damage it again. He's going to go fix it again. And that's going to go on for maybe, what, four to five times? When it gets to five times, he's going to say, you know what? Printer's damaged. We gotta take it out, we gotta send it to, to tech to, to get fixed because it's not working. So you stop the company, they're not gonna be able to print their, their checks because the printer's not printing. And that's the simplest way, but it is a way of stopping a company. You just stop her in her tracks right there. You, you, you made a bug, you made a bug happen. You know, and that's what I'm trying to say. You could have different levels of problems, yeah. One is they could attack you personally and do damage personally to the network and to your whole infrastructure. But you also could get the information of your people. And I don't think you really want your customers being vulnerable of having their information exposed just because you did not secure your infrastructure the right way. You know, And the truth of the matter is, with some simple test, any IT guy could figure out a lot of specific ways your network probably is vulnerable and you should invest on securing your infrastructure so a lot of IT guys uh, ITS is out there willing to help you out to to fix your infrastructure train your people of how to keep things secure and how to make things work it is your prerogative to do so but I don't think that the user or your customer should be liable for mistakes that your company is doing so those are the things we should be looking out there that's what the problems are uh, so actually that's all about that that part we're gonna start talking about the conclusion of the video and it is what are the levels of defense that we really do have okay let me say it this way we already said the whole negative part of the video. So we're going to start talking positives now. We already said everything that it is could be bad. Everything that it could be happening and everything that is out there that it could be bringing in problems to you and all the bad things. Actually, all the bad things, you already know them because they're already out there. You already know they're there. You know, and we already know that. So what are the good things, Adio? Come on. So what are you saying? We're hopeless? It's nothing that we can do? Uh, it's not that bad, you know. There are a lot, believe me. There are a lot of different. Uh, there are a lot of different things out there that that help us out to protect us. And I'm gonna give you some examples, and that will prove to you that we are not so hopeless as much people think. Maybe, you know, we do have the tools. Listen, it works this way. If you have a router and you tell your, your IT guy, listen, I got this router. I want to put it because I want to add some computers to my network and I want to have them in the different net, um, mask of IPs. Can I give you install it? And you give it to your IT guy. And he calls you back like in three, five minutes and tells you, oh, it's done. That IT guy is not the IT guy you need. It is impossible. He couldn't install that in two minutes or three minutes. Of course, he could put a cable on it and connect three machines on it and it'll work because all these products are out of the box workable. Most routers and products 
you buy them and they work out of the box. You just put them out and connect them and they work. But working does not mean that they are configured and programmed right. Okay, for example, if you have any any infrastructure and you want to control the people that are within there, you need to configure it by MAC address. Most programmers or most IT guys do not do that because that takes a lot of work. But that's a, that's a layer of security and the routers brings it. But they do not program it. They do not use it. Router have filterings. They have different levels of security. They have a different of a zillion of different protocols that you could use for securing. They're in there. You're paying for them. You're paying for them. They already pay for them when you bought it. And you know what they do? They just use them as the basic as they can so that they don't get too complicated with it. That's not an option. If a router brings security and you implement it, you'll get security. If you do not implement the security of the router, it is obvious. It is not going to secure you. You're just going to have something laying there waiting for it to be attacked. If you buy a firewall and then the firewall brings you like 20 different features that it's going to help you out to filter and protect you from and you don't implement it right, you just use the basic ones, two or one features, uh, it is obvious you're not helping your customer or your customer is not being helped. Because remember, it's not only the fault of, the, of your IT guy. Most times, or sometimes, it happens like this. The IT sees the problem and he says, but fixing this and putting it the way it goes, it'll take 50, 100 hours. You know, when I tell this to my customer, he's not gonna pay me for that. He's gonna probably say no. So he just does not say it. And by not saying it, he's perpetrating this. You know, now the customer is not getting the best security, but also the person did not implement it. And sometimes it's the customer. You tell him, this is what you got to do. This is the way it should be. And he says, you know what? Yeah, I know understand. But we're not in the budget right now. It's not the budget. This is not the time. We're, we're downsizing with this, with that. Well, no big deal. It's there. But you know you shouldn't have it done. Yeah, but they didn't do it. So security is out there. The equipments that you buy, and remember, do not misunderstand, you know, it's a zillion equipments out there, super high tech, that I see them and I'm like, oh man, this is like the one, I love this. You should see the Cisco routers, they have a line of Cisco routers, super cool, you know, that they have like features that... They like get your imagination going and you should see the the, uh, the lenses they, they bring in the the, the d-link they also bring in a line of routers that are like mad cool you know it's like they have features that you will go like my god you know it's like fiber optics you know they, they bring these these new routers that the the information that goes out here communic this router first communicates with this other router and then this router tells them the information that is coming is coming encrypted by me with a package you decrypt it when it gets there so now if you've cut the cable you just put the switch there it might not work because if these two routers are not communicating together and you're in the middle they don't see you they only see themselves so they do all these new gadget tools and they are out there you know they mad cool yeah and they protect you from a lot of things but then you know then what happens they're so good as people that do not know how to use them or attack them are out there. Let me explain that. You spend $10,000 in a router and you got a $10,000 router. You probably won't have as many people to understand that router as the people that bought a $100 router. Who bought a $100 router has maybe millions of people that knows how to hack it but who bought the ten thousand dollars router maybe only has hundreds of people able to hack it because only hundreds of people managed to get their hands on that type of technology to deal with it so but you still have people that knows how to hack it so sometimes it's not getting the most complicated technology out there to do the job it's like 
the example that I gave you.